Right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. All right, Ken, thanks very much. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call at 412 575 2600. Bob Pompiani, flanked tonight by Paul Zeiss of the Pittsburgh Post Gazette and 93.7 The Fan, and we have a lot to get into. We invite your conversation. Call the number or give us a tweet at KD Pomp at Paul Zeiss. Pirates continue to just mow down bad teams. They're now 18 and 5 against teams with records of under 500. And what's wrong with that? A lot of people I find it interesting on Twitter saying, ah, that's just the way it is. They'll get hammered with the good teams. Well, you don't know that. What you do know is they're beating the teams they're supposed to beat. As a result, they're now 26 and 17. That's nine games over 500. By contrast, a lot better than last year when they were 19 and 24 after 43 games. So, Paul, tonight they did it, come from behind against the San Diego Padres. It is interesting to note that this is a last place team, last opponent, White Sox, last place team. The next opponent, the Reds, last place team. Marlins, they're all last place teams, but everyone's going to have to play them, and everyone should beef up on them, and the Pirates have done that. Yeah, well, like I said, to everybody that has basically talked about this Pirates team, they got the char uh, Chargers, the, the, the Padres now. They've got the Reds next week. After that, they've got a stretch of like 20, 26 out of 29 games against the better teams. They play, you know, uh, they play the Chicago, Cubs, the Cardinals. They play uh, Arizona, Arizona in that stretch. Right. So at the end of that stretch of 29 games or so, we'll have a really good idea where this team is. But it's good that they're beating up on bad teams. They should beat bad teams. And then, you know, the, the, there are some really, really putrid really teams. teams. I mean, Detroit mm -hmm. and White Sox are horrible. That horrible. whole American League Central is horrible. And with the sense, exception I mean, of the, 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 uh, the, um, you know, the, 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 the Reds are horrible. The Marlins are horrible. The White Sox of, are horrible. There's a lot the of Padres really, really are horrible. bad teams in this. Right league. now the Dodgers are horrible, but I suspect they'll get their act together. But it was good to see the Pirates have made a move, uh, and it looks like it's going to be Austin Meadows coming up for the injured Starling Marte. Marte just was running the bases the other day, and for whatever reason left the game. We find out it could be an oblique, which means he's going to go on the DL, which means I would suspect that Clint Hurdle is going to put Meadows right in the lineup tomorrow night. Why not? He's played Sean Rodriguez in center the last two days. This is what Meadows does. It's his time. We'll see what he can do. Yeah, why not? I mean, he's a real outfielder. I mean, it's <laughs> just, you know, that's the thing about the, you know, Clint Hurdle. I know he loves to use all of his guys and everything else, but if you've got an option that's a real outfielder, put him out there and let him play the 15 games or whatever it's going to be. Let him go. When, James, uh, when, when Josh Harrison gets back, put him back in the lineup and let this team go. Well, they got some good production tonight. Again, Josh Bell continues to swing a good bat. You know, they have a lot of guys in their lineup, Paul, with over 20 runs batted in, and the only National League team uh, to have five guys with 20-plus RBIs uh, that's saying something. I think there are only three in all of Major League Baseball. So the Pirates are getting it done. They lead all of Major League Baseball, hitting with runners on base. I mean, nobody's done it better than Francisco Cervelli, who was back in the lineup tonight. And I know some people will talk about Cervelli, by the way, as one of those guys who's he's injury prone. Okay, but he plays a position which gets battered back there. And he got hit the other day in the right forearm. And I thought that thing was going to be broken the way he was in pain, Paul. Yeah, but that's just him. I mean, he's a guy that... Everything is, you know, way over. He's just overly dramatic. So you think guy. he's overly dramatic all the time? Play. He's a he's one of these guys, and I think he's a you know a, a good player and all this stuff. But if you've ever watched, if you watch him behind the plate, every time the ball bounces up and hits him or whatever, he acts like he's dying. You know what I mean? He needs his hand. And the other night I was watching, and he swung the bat, and <clears throat> it, it was cold out, and he swung the bat, and he's holding his hand like this, like he hurt it. Just play baseball. <laughs> this guy, I ain't got time for it. I have a lot of respect for all catchers. I think they. I do. It's a tough position, but I mean, uh, he, he's just a guy that you know. He, 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 I think he's very overly dramatic about a lot of things that happen. <laughs> all right, Tampa Bay looks like maybe evening the series. Uh, three two, they lead that game with four minutes left. If so, that means nobody who has home ice would have won in that series. I want to get your thoughts real quick on Vegas and Mark Andre Fleury. Uh, who continues to be outstanding. He was the number one star and made two unbelievable saves on the same player in Mark Shifley last night. It, they yeah. were as good as saves as I've seen in quite some time by anyone. I thought Fleury was unbelievable last night. I thought, he, And he had to be that good for them to win. Uh, Winnipeg is just hard. They're a tough team to deal with. Uh, he just 
last night was at a different level. I mean, he was one of those things where you hear about a goaltender stealing a game at times. You know, and I know he gave up, what, three goals or two goals or whatever it was, but, boy, he was really, really good. They could – uh, 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 an average goaltender or an average outing by a goaltender, uh, uh, Winnipeg could have scored seven or eight goals in that game. They could. He was outstanding. Winnipeg came on heavy at the uh, They dominated the rest of that game, but they could not solve Flurry. We're going to take a break. It's 412-575-2600. Call us. Air your opinions. You can do it right now. Live on Pittsburgh CW. We come back right after this.